Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to live migrate a KVM virtual machine. This is something I have gotten many questions about in the past and I figured it'd be um, pretty simple for me to just create a tutorial and I'll show you how to do it. So first of all, you want to have a storage set up that uh, basically the storage is off of one server but is referenced by others. The easiest way to do that is using NFS. So we're going to say pseudonano-etc-exports. Now before you do this, you obviously need to install the NFS server. So However you go about doing that, I can post that in the link in the description. But basically you need to set up and you need to configure the NFS server. So this is a configuration I'm using here. I'm sharing mount vd0 and I'm sharing it to this IP address slash 32, this IP address slash 32. I'm giving them read write privileges and that is about all. So um, this is the directory. This is the share point basically that you're allowing to connect to it. Um, and then after you do that, you just say sudo export fs a, and that will apply your NFS changes. Okay, so now that we've got that cleared up, the next step in live migrating a VM is actually migrating the VM. So once it's on the shared storage um, and booted off of that shared storage, um, this is currently on the uh, host computer that has the storage. So what that means is that when you migrate this, you're going to migrate it to a different server that uh, is referencing that same storage, and you'll see why that makes sense here in a second. So we're going to say um, versh migrate, and we're going to say dash dash live, and I happen to have a VM name copied here. This is my Redis server. Uh, we're going to copy that, and we're going to say dash dash persistent because we want it to stay on that other host. Next, we're going to say dash dash undefined source because it gets really confusing when that same VM is defined on multiple sources. So this completely removes it from the VM like selection and the VM options that exist on the current host. And this is assuming it successfully migrates. If it does not successfully migrate, it'll stay on this host and you don't have to worry about the undefined source. Next, we're going to say dash dash verbose which means it's going to give us a exact output of exactly what it's doing, where it's at in the process, etc. cetera. Uh, and then actually for this one, we're gonna have to say dash dash unsafe. And this is because the storage on this uh, current host server does not know that it's actually a available storage on another device. So basically we have to force it to go through, but once it's onto a different host, then we'll be fine. So next we're gonna say QEMU plus SSH colon slash slash the IP address of our other server and we're going to say slash system and that is basically just the path to connect to that uh, verse server uh, and you want to before you do this you need to have an SSH key set up I would highly recommend you have an SSH key set up from this server to your other one uh, it just makes it a lot easier so we're going to click enter and as you can see migration is 3863 100% right there done so now if we log into the other one, this is going to be server number seven, as you will see in a second. As you can see, we have a unified VM, but we also have the Redis VM that we just migrated over. That is very cool. So it live migrated it. The VM never shut down in that process. Everything stayed running. Now the ping might have dropped for a split second, but um, it is not much because yeah. So that is how you live migrate the VM. Um, real quick though, if you are curious, I'm going to ping this VM um, as I'm migrating it just to show you that the ping does not drop out. So as you can see over here on the right I am pinging this VM um, at half a second interval just so we can see. Uh, I'm going to go back here uh, onto server number seven and we are actually going to type this command backwards. So we're gonna say version migrate dash dash live and we're gonna say our VM name. Next we're gonna say dash dash undefined Source, geez, verbose, uh, persistent, QEMU plus SSH, blah, 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 1261687. I do not know the IP of the other server. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, so we're going to send it back to the dot one six seven server. We're going to do this live, and we're not going to say unsafe this time. And as you can see in the pings, so we are still pinging it as it's migrating. There you go. So you see there, it went up to about 37 milliseconds right there, kind of at the end of that migration, probably when the network switched over, um, when the network started routing to the new server. But 
Um, that is not bad in terms of downtime for migrating a VM. That is basically none. You don't even have to shut it down, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, for me, at least, it's been really nice. I want to set up some like highly available storage, but I've not gotten there yet. So another part of this migration that a lot of people have wondered is why I have 10 gigabit per second switches. Um, and this is because these migrations take a whole lot of bandwidth. Okay, so I have just added a graph here, and I'm going to actually show you a live picture of me migrating the VM. Alright, so I'm going to migrate this VM one more time for the purposes of this video. I'm going to show you why I need a 10 gigabit per second fiber connection to this server. Let's run this command again. You'll watch the graph in the bottom left. It's going to greatly increase. Um, and actually, you can see actually the VM did drop a ping there for a second. Um which is odd because it didn't last time, so it must have just dropped for long enough that it it decided to drop that ping. But as you can see there, the graph uh, on the network interface went about 6.6 .6 gigabits per second um, is where it peaked at. So it was a lot of burst um, bandwidth right there. It wasn't like spread out. It was pretty much all at once. Um, but that does make the migrations faster because you're not relying off a 1 gig connection. I would imagine over a 1 gig connection, it's actually going to be a slower migration, uh, and it might even drop you a little longer. So this should be the opposite direction now, and the graph should highlight purple. Yep. And it did drop another ping there, which is really odd. So I don't know. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's not a huge deal for me because whatever one drop ping of ping is is not that bad, I would say. So... Yep, that is basically the process of live migrating a KVM virtual machine. I uh, hope you enjoyed. hope this answers your questions. If you have any questions, leave them down below uh, in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Um, but that is about it for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I will see you in the next video.